In the era of digital globalization, internet connectivity has become as essential as the air we breathe. Every corner of our planet buzzes with digital activity, yet there are places where access to reliable, high-speed internet remains a challenge. Remote areas, far-flung islands and off-the-grid locales often grapple with connectivity. Enter Starlink, a revolutionary solution aiming to bridge this gap. Starlink Satellite Internet aims to bridge this digital divide, but how does it work? Let's dive in. Starlink's network relies on a constellation of small satellites orbiting the Earth. This constellation is no ordinary one. It's formed by satellites cruising at altitudes between 211 and 746 miles. They're strategically placed in low Earth orbit, ensuring they're close enough to deliver high-speed internet, yet far enough to avoid terrestrial obstacles. This positioning is key to minimizing latency, resulting in a snappy and responsive internet experience. These satellites are just one part of the puzzle. The ground stations play an equally important role. Ground stations act as the liaison between the satellites and the internet backbone. These strategically positioned facilities serve a crucial role in the Starlink system, transmitting data to and from the satellites. Think of them as gateways between the celestial and terrestrial realms of the internet. But what exactly is the internet backbone? Well, it's the high-capacity network infrastructure that connects different networks and data centers globally. It's like the motorway of the Internet, facilitating fast and efficient data transmission worldwide. When you're browsing the web or streaming your favorite show, the user terminal sends a request to the nearest Starlink satellite. This satellite then relays your request to the appropriate ground station, which routes it to the Internet backbone. In return, the requested data is sent from the Internet backbone through the ground stations and back to the satellite before finally reaching your user terminal. With the ground stations connecting the satellites to the Internet backbone, how does this data reach you, the user? The user terminals or satellite dishes are the gateways to this space-age Internet connectivity. These are not your typical television dishes. Instead, they are sophisticated phased array antennas installed at your homes or businesses, acting as your personal liaison to the Starlink satellite constellation. Imagine you want to browse the web or stream your favorite movie. Your user terminal, always on the job, sends a signal to the nearest Starlink satellite in its line of sight. Like a cosmic game of pass the parcel, the satellite then passes the signal onto the appropriate ground station on Earth. This ground station is your portal to the Internet backbone, the high-capacity network infrastructure that connects various networks and data centers worldwide. It takes your request, routes it through this vast web of connectivity, and retrieves the data you asked for. But the journey doesn't end there. The ground station then sends your requested data back up to the satellite. The satellite, in turn, transmits this data back to your user terminal completing a round trip that might seem lengthy, but in reality, happens faster than you can say, Starlink. This round trip of data transmission allows you to surf the web, stream videos, and stay connected, no matter where you are. And as you continue to use the internet, this process goes on and on, ensuring that your connection to the digital world remains uninterrupted. The potential impact of this service is colossal. It's not just about streaming your favorite shows or keeping up with social media, it's about empowering remote education, enabling telemedicine, and fostering economic opportunities. It's about making the world a more connected place. To learn more about Starlink and the future of satellite internet, continue exploring and keep asking questions. The universe of information is at your fingertips, thanks to the revolution in internet connectivity.